Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and today we are going to talk about the summons that are available this weekend. We have another 10x banner. Um, we got Zill 2, Nocturne, we got, and we got Dolores. Um, if you don't have a Dolores, you probably are going to be summoning this weekend because she is insanely valuable. If you want to check out my video on her, I just put that out yesterday. Um, so it's already on the channel. You're more than welcome to check that one out. Uh, but first, we're gonna today we're gonna talk about Zilla too. So uh, just a, I did promise I would talk about Nocturne really really quickly. Um, so Nocturne is a single target magic based damage dealer, which is really really valuable. If you don't have Hex, then you should probably be summoning for this because he will help you in clan boss. He will help you. Also, anywhere that has like really high defense units, so like Chapter 9, he was crazy valuable. Uh, Nightmare Void Rift, crazy valuable. Um, one of the best units in the game for that content. The other two units who I happen to have both that I think are really, really good there in terms of single target damage dealers are Silas and Hex. So if you don't have them and you need a single target damage dealer, the Nocturne is almost going to be a must-have for you. Um, but today's video is going to be on Zilla 2. Speaking of single target damage, she is single target, but she is a fighter. It's weird that's popping up. So let's take a look at Zilla 2. So here's my Zilla 2 in all her glory. I She was one of the first units that I got uh, in terms of legendaries, actually. And I've been using her ever since. I still use her all over the place. Um... I've been working on her gear a little bit. I do want to put her... I do want to change her gear. I'll show you what gear I want to put on her. Uh, we'll take a quick look at her stats. So she had 30k HP, 16k attack, and 400 speed, and 290 crit damage. Uh, but before we go through the gear in too much detail, let's take a look at what she does. So skill one deals 120% damage to one enemy. This includes airborne units. Block targets take 20% more damage. So for starters, the fact that she can she's a fighter and she can airborne units is very valuable, especially because one thing we didn't see there is her incredible range. This range is insane for a fighter. It means you can put a tank in front of her, put her behind the tank, and you don't care if she's squishy because she's going to blow everything up. Uh, there are a few different enemies in the game that can hit through your tank and hit the unit behind them so you do have to be aware of that um, but this range is insanely valuable in so many locations so moving on with our skills our first passive each attack launch deals extra two damage equal to 50 percent attack one time if the target's hp is higher than 80 percent um, anytime you get true damage is nice. True damage is basically ignore defense. So she's just going to rip through those defense units a little bit faster. Second passive charges, uh, energy after three seconds of not dealing damage, increases damage by 10% per second, up to 50% charge energy will be consumed in one second and the damage increase will end. So basically if you're dealing with waves worth of stuff and then there's a little break and then there's a wave and then there's a break she gets even stronger um this is really really good does a ton of damage but the big thing for her is her ultimate so before we even read the ultimate first thing we're going to notice is that her the amount of rage required is 900 and the amount of rage she starts with is 800. So basically you can put her down and you can ultimate right away. And that can be very valuable in any comps where you're like putting a unit in, taking a unit out. Um, Cause you know you can use her ultimate right away and it does insane damage. So in terms of what it does, when triggered deals 380% extra damage in larger range. So keep that in mind. We talked about how crazy her range is. This range gets extended and it gets extended for 35 seconds, which is a really long time, especially since you can put her down and use her ult right away. This also inflicts burn every time she attacks. The effect duration is increased by one second for every kill during the skill. So that part, I mean, it's a little odd because she's probably not killing multiple people since it's a single target, um, especially on clan boss. But the fact that she can have this burn up for 35 seconds is really, really valuable. 
Um, and she's got a relatively low rage cap as well. So, now that we know all that, let's take a look at her gear. Personally, I really like Infernal Roar on her because it all of her attacks are basic attacks. Um, and it increases the damage by 40%. You can go Soulbound on her because it increases damage by 10% permanently up to 5 times. So you're going to start at 10% boost because you can ult right away. And it'll go up to 50% boost. But that means you have to wait for four alts to equal the amount that you'd have right off the bat. I think you're just going to lose damage unless it's a really, really, really long fight. And you're going to be ulting probably more than five times. It's not worth it. Um, I definitely would go with Infernal Roar for her. Uh, because you can see, I am on crit rate main. And I'm not overly happy about it. <laughs> but uh, it does have a decent attack roll with a crit damage roll, a speed roll, and a flat attack roll, which helps make up for the fact that it's not attack main. Then we have a nice attack piece here with a big speed roll, crit damage, crit rate, and then another attack piece with speed and a decent crit damage roll with some tanky substats. She is a fighter, so you want some HP and some defense on there if you can. Then, because we're on crit rate main, we can afford to use this piece that doesn't have any crit rate on it. HP, defense, attack, and crit damage. And then speed crit rate, crit damage, and defense here. Unfortunately, this ancient doesn't have attack on it, but what are you going to do? Um, my game plan for her, since I promised I would share this, is this piece here. So I got this piece the other day. I want to ascend this piece, put it on her. I could potentially use this one as well. It's also really good. The problem is that her amulet has really low crit rate for an, an ancient piece only is 13 crit so we're going to be using the first one which i got a big crit roll 26 that'll help make up for the 13 on the first one uh the only reason i haven't done it yet is because i don't really have a good crit damage bengal to put on her that is on an infernal roar set so when i get a crit damage a good crit damage bengal i will be switching her over away from this uh, crit rate main and on to crit damage attack attack. For If you're only using her in clan boss or primarily using her in clan boss, you can go double crit damage as well. Um, I just use her all over the place. So for now, I'm going to stick with single crit damage and we'll see how that works. All right. Um, looking into her awakenings, her awakenings are valuable. The problem is that you need a lot of them. So the first one, Soul Fice Siphonings, remaining HP requirement lowered to 70%. This is fine. It's not a huge deal. Um, I mean, you like the... It would give you extra damage, which is always nice. But it's not... It's not huge. <laughs> um, the difference between 80% and 70%, you're probably not going to get too much out of it. Second one is crit damage plus 15%. Again, it's fine. It's good extra damage, but it's not huge. This is where things start to get serious, though. Um, this is the duration of her ultimate. It's already 35 seconds. If you get her to A3, it jumps from 35 to 45 seconds. That's a huge jump. Um, anytime you can get like a 30% jump on in terms of duration on your ultimate, yes, you're going to take it. That is a Big awakening there if you happen to get her to A3. Rage regen plus two means she's going to get that ult back even quicker, especially with a shorter cooldown. That's a really positive thing. I really like the A4. And the A5 recovers 10% HP for every stack of recharge consumed during Empress Might, um, which means she's going to be able to self sustain as well. The problem is she can't really take too many hits. Um, so I don't know how valuable the heal is going to be. Um, if you're taking, t if she's not killing it, you're probably gonna die anyway. But realistically, the A3 and the A4 are the ones that I would be excited about if I had any of them. Unfortunately, I do not. In terms of artifact, I have her on Flawless Blade. You can also put her on. Where'd it go? I think Crystal Violinus is probably best for her. Unfortunately for me, I only have one. Um, but at some point, I will consider switching her over. 
but I do have that on my Valeria. So Flawless Blade, really, really good all over the place. Um, I saw people saying that it was a terrible artifact, and sorry, but you're just wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to explain it. It's an amazing artifact. It's probably... It's arguably the best fighter artifact in the game. The problem is that it's a little conditional, so it won't always be the best, but it'll never be the worst, if that makes any sense. Um, like, there's situations like uh, with Crystal crystal Vileness, it's most likely going to be better in Clan Boss, um, because over time, your odds are going to equal out that you're going to get more damage out of it. Um, and sometimes Void Geezer can also be really good. Like, for um, Arrogance here, Void Geezer's really good. But for Zilla 2, I think if I had my choice out of anything, I would probably go of Crystal of Vileness first, and then Flawless Blade second. So, where are we going to use Zilla 2? First things first, she's most popular in Guild Boss. She is in both my Guild Boss teams for NM3 and NM4. Um, you can see here, she's in this team. She had 36 million damage. And she's in this team. She got 30 million damage almost uh, on NM4. Now, you'll notice that she's quite a bit down in terms of my damage dealer. She's my fifth highest damage on my team. The main reason for that is because I don't have a Infernal Lord. And the rest of my units have a Lord, and she does not. Now, if we take a look at some other people's teams that do have her, um, and they have an Infernal Lord to go with it, all of a sudden she jumps up and she's over 50 million. If we take a look at the top teams from today... Uh, oh, there she is. I was like, wait, she's not in here? That would have been shocking. Um, so instead of Pyros, they're using an A1 Twin Fiend, A1 Twin Fiend, A1 Twin Fiend for all three of the top three teams. Um, and then paired with Zill 2, paired with Zill 2, and paired with Zill 2. So let's just take a look at the damage. Almost 200 million because paired with that A1 Twin Fiend there. Um, if you know how the Lord skill works, then you already know. And if you don't, uh, if you have Zill 2, you're going to want to find out. Uh, basically, it's going to amplify your damage, your ultimate damage whenever your Pyros or your Twin Fiend ults. Um, if you can pair them together, you're going to get some insane damage numbers out of your Zill 2. 171 million and 163 million. Uh, pretty crazy. Now, these guys' stats are definitely going to be better. Keep in mind they're also on. Um, they're also A4. I think it was A4, A4, A3, uh, and they're fully max skilled. Mine is the alt skilled to max, but not all the way. Here we got about 16k attack, which is pretty close to mine, but he's got an extra 100 crit damage, and on crystal vileness again. Take a look at this one. Crystal Violence again, 416 crit damage with a little less attack. And then finally, 430 crit damage with even less attack, also on Crystal Violence. So all three of the top teams from today running Crystal Violence, all of them over 400 crit damage, and hovering in between 14.5 to 16.5 thousand attack. Um, so that seems to be the recipe for Clan Boss is really high crit damage for her and um, not as worried about the attack. A lot of people are going to be running double crit damage on their builds. One more thing I do want to point out for Clan Boss before we go over to other locations that I didn't mention when we went through the skills is on the A1 it says blocked targets take 20% more damage. Now, what I was doing in Clan Boss, unfortunately I don't have any more Clan Boss keys to show you, but what I was doing on my run until recently is I was putting down my Arrogance in front and I was putting my Zilla 2 in behind because my Arrogance is tankier than my Zilla 2 and I thought I was just keeping her safe. 
But when we take a look at that passive and it says that it blocks or does more damage, twenty percent more damage if it's uh, blocking the unit, that includes the clan boss. So keep that in mind when you're deploying your team. Um, her basic attack is going to do 20% more damage if you have her on the front line. If you have her in behind somebody, then that won't work. So you want her in that front line so she gets that extra 20% damage. It's really, really important in terms of multiplying her damage. In terms of where else can you use her, honestly, you could probably use her anywhere. Uh, I am not using her currently in any of my gear raids. That being said, you could use her in some gear raid one, I guess. I don't think she's good there. But you could use her if you just needed an extra unit to help burst down the boss or something. Um, then gear raid two, I don't recommend it, but she could be, again, used to burst down the boss at the end. Gear raid three, she definitely could be used. You could use her to... Um, help kill the boss at the beginning of the fight. Um, where you've got your two archers or your two rangers on either side killing the boss. Uh, if they're not doing quite enough damage, you could pop her down uh, with a little cost regen champ maybe and have her help burst down the boss because she does hit flying targets. Uh, she'll be really good to help with the odds as well. And then also in scenario, top tier, um, in campaign, I mean, keep calling it scenario. In campaign, she's really, really good. Like I said, at the very beginning, you can throw her behind a tank and she'll be really good. Also very good in Void Rift. Uh, I used her in a lot of the Void Rift last couple of weeks because we had the Infernal buff as well. So very good there. Um, should you summon for this unit if you don't have her? I would say if you have a A1 Twin Fiend or a Pyros, you almost have to summon. The only way you wouldn't is if you already have like multiple fighters that have ranged DPS that can hit flyers. Uh, and even then, she's one of the best units in the game. So it's uh, it would be a hard pass if I didn't already have her. Uh, so I won't be summoning this weekend because I already have a copy. And I don't have enough to get her to A3 or A4. So I'm not going to bother summoning. But... Uh, yeah, if you don't have her, she is a huge addition to your team. So good luck on your summons. We're going to wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Bye for now, guys.